Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new x86 single board computer known as the Radaxa Rock Pi X. So yeah, this is an Intel CPU based single board computer. It's the same size as a Raspberry Pi 4. We have full size HDMI, a quad core Intel CPU, 4 gigs of RAM, and 32 gigabytes of internal storage using eMMC. And this one here comes in at $75. And it looks like they offer several different models, but the only one that I've really seen online right now is the 4 gigabyte model with 32 gigabytes of internal storage for 75. But as you can see here, they have a Model A and a Model B. If you're looking into getting one of these, I would definitely go with the Model B because it has PoE and AC Wi-Fi built in. Real quick, I'll just give you a size comparison between the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Rock Pi X. As you can see, they're laid out in the exact same way except for the full-size HDMI on the Rock Pi X. So most of the cases for the Raspberry Pi 4 will not work with this. And you might have already noticed that the CPU is actually located on the bottom of the Rock Pi X. So if you did have a case for the Raspberry Pi 4 that you modified, we still need to cool this Intel CPU on the Rock Pi X. And unfortunately, it doesn't come with a cooling solution. I believe they offer one on their website, but I do have a lot of little heat sinks laying around, so I'll be able to sufficiently cool this unit for all of my testing. As you can see up front here, we have a full-size Gigabit Ethernet port, three USB 2.0 ports, and one USB 3.0 port. Over here, we have a 3.5mm audio jack, full-size HDMI, and USB Type-C for powering the board. But there is a catch to sending power to this unit over USB Type-C. This will not work correctly on 5 volts, so you need something that's 9 to 12. So a quick charge or a PD power supply is required. On the back end here, we have a status and a power LED, plus the power key and an external power key adapter. So if you do want to add an external power key, it's just a two-wire button. It will work with this unit. The Rock Pi X does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. It's Bluetooth 4.0 and 802.11ac Wi-Fi. This also comes with an external antenna. It's got a GPIO layout, just like the Raspberry Pi 4, 40 pins. It also has a display connector, a micro SD card reader, and a spot to put an RTC battery. So what kind of specs are we getting here with the $75 single board computer? Well, for the CPU, we have the Intel Atom Z8350. We have four cores at 1.44 gigahertz with a burst up to 1.92. Built-in Intel HD graphics up to 500 megahertz, four gigabytes of LPDDR3 up to 1866, 32 gigabytes of built-in eMMC storage, plus we can add more storage via the micro SD card slot or USB. We also have 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and since this is running an Intel x86 CPU, there's a ton of different operating systems that we can run. A bunch of different Linux distros, Windows, Android, I mean the list goes on and on, but for this video I'm actually going to be testing out Windows 10 because that's the first operating system that I installed on it. And by the way, I use the OEM image from Redax's website. It has all the drivers pre-installed, and this is how it's meant to run Windows 10. You can also install this over USB like you would with any other laptop or desktop, but then you got to kind of run through and download the drivers. Now, if I was to go ahead and test this with no heat sink, we'd be throttling that CPU all day. And this doesn't come with a cooling solution, but I do have a lot of stuff that I could add here. And I think I'm going to be going with this little heat sink here. It's aluminum with a fan. And as long as I can stay under that thermal throttle temperature, it'll work just fine. And I will let you know as we're making the video if this one worked out. If not, I will move over to something a little beefier. But just keep in mind that with all of the tests you're going to see in this video, the CPU will not be throttling. All right, so here we are. I've got a bunch of stuff installed. I've updated all the drivers. I've set my power profile to ultimate performance. And I've also disabled all of the uh, effects on screen for Windows itself. As you can see, we have that Atom X5Z8350 at 1.44 gigahertz. 4 gigs of DDR3 at 1600 megahertz. And the Intel HD graphics. So as for storage on this unit, um, after you get Windows installed on it, let's see here. And a few applications, you're going to have 6 to 8 gigs free. I've got a few things installed on the internal storage, but most of my games and everything that you're seeing on the desktop are actually installed on an external drive. So I've got Chrome, Core Temp, and Steam installed on the internal drive along with Windows 10, and I have 6.29 gigs free. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention that this CPU was actually released quarter one of 2016, so it's a little over four years old now, and when it comes to these low-powered or mobile chips, they're pretty outdated after a few years. But either way you look at it, I still want to test this thing out. Uh, I ran a couple benchmarks. First thing was Crystal Disk for the internal eMMC. 
And when you look at it here, it is definitely a lot faster than a micro SD card, but it has nothing on a cheaper NVMe SSD or even some SATA SSDs. It's still quick enough for a little board like this. Next thing I ran was Geekbench 5, single core, 186, multi, 595. Definitely pretty low in the whole grand scheme of things. Okay, so let's jump into some real world performance. Let's say you want to get one of these just to use it for email checking and web browsing. It will work just fine, whether you're using the Chrome browser or the Edge browser. I chose to use the Edge browser here. I'm not going to fast forward anything. I just want you to see how fast this thing is. And while it's not super quick, it's definitely faster at web browsing than the Raspberry Pi 4 is. We've got this page loaded up. I can scroll through here. Well, it's not the smoothest that I've seen, it is working. And you can totally browse the web on something like this, no problem at all. I'm going to check out some WebGL performance here. And I want to take this over to the right-hand side. And this is something I test on all of these little boards. FPS is listed here. And we're sitting at 100 fish. Our GPU is pretty much maxed out here and it's not doing 60. Now my display is not capped at 30 or anything like that. If I go to one fish, we still can't hit it. So we'll take it up to 30,000. You'll see that CPU usage jump on up there. We're at about four FPS. So yeah, the newer Celeron chips are way faster than this. Uh, I've been able to get up to 1,000 at 60 with, let's say, an N4100 or an N4000. So now we're going to test out some YouTube video playback. And when it comes to loading a bunch of images, as you can see, I mean, it's not super quick. This is just a 1080p video. We'll go full screen with it. See, so yeah, we had a couple drop frames. Not bad though. Let's get to some area. Let's get it here. So 1080p playback from YouTube is totally possible on the Rock Pi X. It's not bad at all, as you can see here. And by the way, my screen is set to 1080p, but I do have it scaled up so we can see it a little better. We're at 150%, but we're still at 1080. And the last thing in the web browser, for video playback, we're going to test out Plex. And I purposely didn't test any 4K videos in YouTube because it doesn't do a great job. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat, at least in YouTube. But when it comes to streaming Plex videos, I was pleasantly surprised. So here we have a 4K video, 30 FPS, 28 megabits per second. Remember, I'm connected over Ethernet. As you can see, it loads right up and it's playing pretty smoothly. I do have my remote playing set to maximum, so this is trying to render it in 4K. And it's working great here, but this is 30 FPS, 28 megabits per second. Let's take it up a notch. 4K, 60, 30 megabits per second. And yeah, it's struggling a bit with 60. And if I go with something with a higher bit rate up in the 40s, it will buffer out. It will play until we hit that buffer wall. So, uh, I mean, 4K video playback on something like this is definitely not what it's meant to do.
Next up, I wanted to test a little bit of light gaming. So we have the Windows version of Minecraft, and overall, I mean, performance really isn't that bad. I've turned the chunks down to 12, but I still have fancy graphics on. And as you can see, we're not at a constant 60, but if I had this off, I really wouldn't even notice it, and the game would be very playable on this chip. Next up, I wanted to test the Steam game, so I went with something older to see how well it would run, and this is Half-Life 2. 720p, low settings, and we can't break 60 with this one either. And before I wrap this up, I also wanted to test a little bit of emulation. Here we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. This is a fairly easy one to emulate. We have Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and it's doing a pretty decent job. I haven't upscaled at all because if we take a look at that FPS, it's still dipping a bit under 60. So I went with something a little harder to emulate just to see what it does here. And as you can see, it's still struggling with this one. I mean, every once in a while we're locked at 60, but as soon as there's a lot going on, it drops down to even 42 FPS. And keep in mind, this is the lowest resolution we can go with the Redream emulator. Next up, we have PSP using PPSSPP. This is Tekken 6, 2x resolution with all the hacks on. It's really hurting here, so I'm going to take it down to 1x. That's going to significantly lower the resolution, but hopefully we can get full speed. As you can see, I got all the hacks on here. And it didn't make much of a difference. So far, this chip isn't looking great for emulation, at least for this higher end stuff. I'm sure it'll do fine with NES, SNES, PC Engine and things like that, but in the end, I mean, a Raspberry Pi does great with those also. And since I'm here, I figured I'd test out some GameCube with the Dolphin emulator. We have Soul Calibur 2, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's not going to run these GameCube games or Wii games at full speed. Okay, so the Rock Pi X, at least with Windows, isn't giving me great performance, and it really comes down to the chipset chosen for this. The chip in here is four years old, it's a very low-end chipset, the Z8350. You can actually pick up many PCs on eBay and Amazon for around $89 to $100 with this same chip and 8 gigs of RAM. I've actually tested several on my channel in the past few years, and I've never really been a big fan of the Z8350 or this Intel Atom CPU. Now, of course, we could go into this with Linux and get much better performance, and that's the next video I'll have coming out on my channel, so definitely keep an eye out. But in the end, if you're looking to pick one of these up to run Windows on it, and you only need to do web browsing and things like that, it will work out just fine. But don't expect good 4K video playback, emulation, or gaming performance out of a little board like this. The chipset is just way too underpowered. Whenever I test a new board like this, I also do power consumption tests in the background. This is plugged into a kilowatt meter from the wall. At idle, we average 4.3 watts. 1080p video playback from YouTube, 8.4 watts. And as for gaming on this board, I tested this with Half-Life 2, we got an average of 13.7 watts. So overall, it's a very low power consumption unit. But that's pretty much it for this video, really appreciate you watching, there's a lot more that I want to test with this board, so my next video will be Linux testing, then we'll get into some dedicated emulation testing, and I also want to run Android on this and see how it performs. But that's it for this one, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and like always, thanks for watching.